I'm in the Mitsubishi Triton GSR, which is the flagship entry for the new generation Triton. And it's a generation that's been a long time coming. There's been big changes to the body, styling and engine. And in this video, I'm going to unpack just how it's handled family life with my little family of three and whether or not its competitors, the Isuzu D-Max, Toyota Hilux and Ford Ranger have anything to worry about. So stay watching. There are four variants for the Triton, with the base model being either a two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive with a diesel engine. The model on test here is the flagship GSR variant and it's priced from $63,840 before on-road costs. Our model does have a brake controller and tow kit fitted, which ups the price to $66,140 overall. But even with those additions, it's still the most affordable compared to its rivals. Feature highlights include a powered front seat with lumbar support, heated front seats, dual zone climate control, as well as a new nine inch touchscreen multimedia system with wireless Apple CarPlay. The full specs are in my detailed written review at carsguide.com.au if you need more info. The old shape of the Triton was quite sleek looking, but it's all gone in favour of a beefier roadside presence that features lots of black accents in the sports bar, 18 inch alloys and just across the body in general. The squared off shaping of the front also just accentuates the toughness of what you expect a ute to look like. I quite like this new design, but let us know in the comments what you think of it. The interior has seen a redesign and the dashboard is now headlined by some fancy new looking tech as well as a lot of soft touch points across it. There's heaps of traditional elements too with the gear shifter, handbrake and physical buttons and dials which are going to appeal to old schoolers. But modern ute dwellers are going to be happy in this as well because you get the comfort and practicality black leather upholstery with contrasting orange stitching for a bit of fun. The front row has oodles of space for my 168 centimeter height. I'm also a really big fan of the side steps and grab handles because the 228 millimeter ground clearance can mean it's a bit cumbersome for me to climb in and out without them. I love how comfortable the front seats are, but I am surprised that in this grade level that the front passenger seat isn't powered as well. Individual storage is excellent for a ute. You get two glove boxes, a deep middle console, phone cubby, sunglasses holder, four cup holders and two drink bottle holders. Now the dash mounted cup holders are old school, nothing new, but I love how practical they are and how you can slide the cup insert to make room for a larger drink like a dare or a chalky oak. There's not much to access in terms of customizations for the multimedia screen, but it is dead set simple to use. Has built-in sat nav, wired Android Auto, as well as wireless Apple CarPlay. And the CarPlay has been super simple to connect to this week. I really like having the traditional analog instrument panel, but you also get a seven inch digital display, which means that you can actually access a lot of the safety customizations in this, which is really handy when you're on the go. Charging options are good up front with a single USB-A and C port and a wireless charging pad to choose from, as well as a 12 volt socket. The back seat's really comfortable. I have heaps of room, but if you're taller, it could get a little bit squishy. I think the amenities back here are pretty good for a ute. You get directional air vents, fan control, a single USB-A and C port and a 12 volt socket as well. This row also sees decent individual storage with map pockets, device pockets, a fold down armrest with two cup holders, as well as a drink bottle holder in each storage bin. There are Isofix child seat mounts on the outboard seats and you can only fit two child seats in here. Nothing can be installed in this middle seat, which could be a problem for families who have an extra tot. Like most utes, it's pretty cumbersome to fit a child seat regardless, but I do like how you thread the top tether at the top rather than having to pull the seat forward and muck around with that. It also means that you can unhook a child seat without having to unhook both of them at the same time. The tray is decently sized and can fit a Euro pallet. It also has a maximum payload capacity of 1,030 kilograms. It has a tub liner and some anchor points, which means that if you do need to hit your local hammer barn, you're sorted. 
This doesn't come with a cover and I would invest in one personally. With all the rain that we've had, when I had to do my grocery run, I had to shove everything into the cabin. It also doesn't have an assisted tailgate, which means that it can be a little bit heavy to open and close. But other than that, this is a pretty cool tray. All four-wheel drive Tritons share the same new 2.4-litre bi-turbo diesel engine that produces a maximum power of 170 kilowatts and 470 newton meters of torque. This has a six-speed automatic transmission, has high and low range, as well as a rear diff lock. It also has the option of seven different terrain modes and can have a brake to towing capacity of three and a half ton. So all weekend adventures can definitely be pursued. The new engine delivers excellent power and it has really good pickup without any chomping at the bit movement throughout the back. I've also enjoyed using the manual gear selectors when going down a mountain this week. This sports new suspension and a chassis, which makes it a little bit springy when you hit really rough stuff. In general though, it absorbs the bumps pretty well on a normal road. Like its predecessor though, I do feel like this has more of a trucky on-road feel than a really refined feel but having said that you still get a really good amount of comfort for long haul driving the cabin is mostly quiet at higher speeds you can get a bit of wind noise and really it's only when you get torrential rain that you have to sort of raise your voice to chat in the cabin I do like too that the taller ride and wide windows makes visibility pretty darn good in this what I think I'm most impressed with, with the Triton, is that it's so sure-footed no matter what you throw at it. And I have thrown a lot at it. We've had torrential rain, I've put it through muddy banks, overflowing causeways, and it hasn't skipped a beat. I am confident in this car. This is quite a long car at just over 5.3 meters. So you are going to have quite a bit of overhang, which meant that I was a little bit choosy with my parking spaces this week. But it's not hard to park because it has such a good 360 degree view camera system as well as front and rear parking sensors. The official combined fuel cycle is 7.7 .7 litres per 100 kilometres. My real world usage came out at 8.7 litres. I have done quite a lot of open road driving this week but I have also done some urban stuff. So I think that that's pretty economical for such a large vehicle. Based on the official combined fuel cycle figure and the large 75 litre fuel tank, you should see a theoretical driving range of 974 kilometres, which is really good for families who do road trips or, you know, an annual camping trip. For those concerned with safety, put those fears aside because the Triton has just been awarded a maximum five-star ANCAP safety rating from testing done this year. It has eight airbags, which is fantastic, especially for a ute, and features the newer front center airbag. It also has a driver attention monitor, which needs a lot of work because it's very sensitive. You scratch your nose, take a sip of coffee or adjust your sunnies and it alerts. And it doesn't seem to work very well in low light or at night time, so much so that I just turned it off during those moments because otherwise you get an alert every five seconds. If you need more info on the safety specs, they are found in my written review at carsguide.com.au if you need more info. If you service through Mitsubishi, the Triton comes with a 10 year or up to 200,000 kilometer warranty, which is better than any other offer on the market at the moment. This cap price servicing for 10 years are up to 150,000 kilometers and services average just $584, which is very good for the class. Servicing intervals are also reasonable at every 12 months or 15,000 kilometers, whichever occurs first. With its new looks and bi-turbo diesel engine, the new Mitsubishi Triton GSR should entice those who are looking for a handsome family ute that can still do serious off-roading adventures. The lack of a third child seat option will deter some families, but I love its ownership benefits and its on-road manners. So it gets an 8.6 out of 10 from me. My son just loves utes in general and did have a lot of fun this week making the tree his own personal fort. So he gives it an eight out of 10. If you're after more details, check out my full review at carsguide.com.au and I'll see you next week.